So Wotish phenomenon tells that with increase in heart rate, the force of cardiac contraction increases with each heartbeat, and in normal conditions this effect helps to adaptate to intense physical activity during running, for example. But what is interesting, according to current guidelines in patients with heart failure with reduced left ventricular ejection fraction, we prescribe beta blockers, it's carvedilol, metoprolol, succinate and bisoprolol. But why we prescribe drugs that cause decrease in heart rate in patients with reduced left ventricular ejection fraction, that is basically cardiac output? Because as we already discussed, according to Bowditch phenomenon, with increase in heart rate, contractility should increase. Moreover, according to current data, in patients with chronic heart failure after myocardial infarction, Increased heart rate correlates with increased mortality rate. Also, according to numerous reports, increased heart rate is associated with both left ventricular dysfunction and left ventricular remodeling. And in patients with left ventricular dysfunction with left ventricular ejection fraction less than 40%, raised heart rate predicted left ventricular dilation and cardiovascular mortality. And the reason is that Bowditch effects work properly only in case of healthy heart muscle, and in this case it called positive Bowditch effect. It was determined that only in normal condition cardiomyocytes have sufficient expression of sarcoprotein to provide sufficient increase in force of contraction. And the reason is that in heart failure the expression of sarcoprotein on sarcoplasmic reticulum of cardiomyocytes substantially decreased. So how it affects contractility of myocardial tissue? First of all, briefly about normal physiology. When neural stimulus reach sarcolemma of cardiomyocytes, it causes depolarization of the cell membrane by activation of voltage-gated sodium channels, and sodium by concentration gradient is going into the cell. This sodium will be exported out of the cell by sodium-potassium ATPase. Depolarization activates dehydropyridine receptors, which are L-type calcium channels, and calcium by concentration gradient is going into the cell. This results in increase in intracellular calcium level. Increase in calcium in cytosol activate trianidine channels on endoplasmic reticulum, and calcium that is stored in endoplasmic reticulum massively is going into the cytosol. This process called calcium-induced calcium release. Calcium binds to troponin molecule, Troponin induces conformational changes in tropomyosin. Tropomyosin exposes binding sites on actin molecule, and this permits myosin molecule to bind to actin molecule. It creates actin myosin bonds that subsequently develop peak muscle tension that results in contraction. But after contraction, relaxation must occur, and to relax, cardiomyocytes have to decrease calcium level in cytoplasm. This decrease in calcium occurs by two mechanisms by sodium calcium exchanger that exports calcium out of the cell and by sarcoprotein that pumps calcium into endoplasmic reticulum. In normal conditions, sarcopathway is a major mechanism that decreases calcium concentration in cytosol. But in heart failure, the expression of sarcoprotein on endoplasmic reticulum is decreased. And in this case, to provide relaxation, decrease in calcium in the cytosol occurs mostly through sodium calcium exchanger. And recall that sodium calcium exchanger exports calcium out of the cell. And simultaneously with that, because the expression of sarcoprotein decreased, less calcium ions are pumped into endoplasmic reticulum. Basically, it causes decrease in amount of calcium in endoplasmic reticulum. And because of that, during next contraction, calcium release from endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol will be substantially decreased. And with decrease in calcium level in cytosol, the force of contraction decreases. This phenomenon called negative Bowditch effect. So now we see that only healthy heart muscle can induce positive Bowditch effect, because only in normal condition cardiomyocytes have sufficient expression of sarcoprotein to pump sufficient amount of calcium molecules from cytoplasm into sarcoplasmic reticulum to cause sufficient increase in calcium release that subsequently will cause increase in cardiac contraction. In contrast to this, in pathological state, because the expression of sarcoprotein decreased, increase in heart rate does not cause sufficient increase in calcium accumulation in endoplasmic reticulum. 
and thereby it will not cause sufficient increase in force of cardiac contraction. And according to current data, decrease in sarcoprotein expression, considered as hallmark of heart failure in humans. Also, there is another problem. It was determined that in case of dilated cardiomyopathy, myocardial tissue has on 45% less myofibrillar proteins compared to normal myocardium. And moreover, the activation of these contractile proteins is reduced. And as we see decrease in amount of myofibrillar proteins and decrease in their activation results in decrease in the force of cardiac contraction. So when we prescribe beta blockers to a patient with heart failure, we don't affect positive voltage effect because in pathological heart it simply do not work. Moreover, as we already said, increase in heart rate in patients with heart failure often associated with decrease in survival. And as we know, beta blockers have some positive effects. First of all, by decrease in heart rate, they prolong left ventricular filling. This causes increase in left ventricular and diastolic volume, and the higher the volume of blood in left ventricle, the more stretch are myocardial fibers of left ventricle. The higher the stretch, the greater is the tension, the greater is the force of left ventricular contraction. This increase in force of contraction due to the increase in stretch of myocardial fibers called frank stalin mechanism. Also because beta blockers decrease heart rate, they reduce myocardial oxygen demands, and also they prolong diastole, and recall that coronary perfusion occur exactly in diastole, thereby they increase coronary perfusion time, and this causes increase in oxygen delivery to myocardial tissue. By the way, this increase in force of contraction due to the increase in intracellular calcium level that we already talked about occurs when we prescribe digoxin. Digoxin is also a drug that is used in patients with heart failure. The mechanism is that digoxin blocks sodium potassium ATPase on cellular membrane. This transporter pumps sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell. So if we block sodium potassium ATPase, this causes increase in intracellular sodium level, and with increase in sodium inside the cell, the activity of sodium calcium exchanger decreases. Thereby, less calcium molecules are going out of the cell, so calcium inside the cytoplasm increases. So, increase in amount of calcium is taken up by sarcoprotein into sarcoplasmic reticulum, and because of that, during next contraction, more calcium molecules will be released from sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm. And the higher will be the calcium level in cytoplasm, the higher will be the force of the next contraction.